With the Sydney summer fast approaching and the first decent warm night of the year, I thought why not get out to the National Park and have a look around. This particular area gets absolutely hammered by hoons and there's no speed cameras to slow them down. So it's my job to get out there and see what I can get off the road before it's run over. All right guys, so it's my first official night drive back after about six months rest. Um, I could not be more excited to be back. Tonight we've got some really good weather predicted and hopefully we can come up with maybe a death adder, a bandy bandy, even a diamond python wouldn't go astray. At the very least, it's good to be saving critters from getting skittled on the road and we've got a beautiful place to watch the sunset. All right, so this is why I froth over this sort of stuff. Like this is the pinnacle of why I do this sort of stuff. I was about to call it. It just started pissing down. There was a lightning storm, lightning striking right near where I was. And then I was like, oh, I'll just do a quick lap and then come back up and go home. Now on that lap, I found an adult diamond python and a juvenile diamond python, literally about 20 to 30 meters apart from each other. I've been bitten by both of them now and it didn't feel too pleasant from the bigger one. But this is what I live for. I spotted the little one sitting on the road and then literally I, I got that one off the road and as I went forward about 20 meters, I came across this bigger one just having a drink off the road. And I was, I literally thought the big one was dead. Both non-venomous, lucky for me because I've been bitten by both of them. It's the first time I've gone night driving in so long and I just couldn't be happier coming across two beautiful diamond pythons. This is night driving at its best. You do not catch anything more spectacular than two diamond pythons in about 20 meters of each other. Bloody beautiful, cannot get enough of it. And they're both gonna live and be moved safely off the road. But I'm putting them back now, my shoulder's killing me and I'm gonna get on with my night. Don't do it. Ah, you Look at that. He's got me bad, this one. Ah, oh, well, you can't win them all, but this is the first piece of road kill I've seen all night, which is pretty lucky. Um, so this is a common scaly foot and I think wouldn't have been skittled much longer before I got there. Um, there was bits of tail all over the road. I thought it was a bandy bandy because it looks segmented. Always remove roadkill from the road. It just saves other animals' lives. Shame about this guy, but who knows? We might find a live one. All right, so I was just driving out of the National Park and the wet weather usually brings these guys out from under their, their burrows and their termite mounds and whatever they live in. Um, this here is the blind snake. This is a blackish blind snake. And it's actually the only food source of the bandy bandy. So if these guys are out, there's the potential that the bandy bandy is hot on their trail. Uh, these guys are actually completely harmless to humans. Like they can't even bite you. They do have a formidable scent that they release if they're irritated and my fingers smell like shit. But um, I just thought I'd show you this guy. Not really too exciting, but you know, some of you might not know that they exist. So yeah, this is the blind snake. I'll try and get some close-ups, but I feel like it's gonna be um, probably no good. Anyway, could be the last animal of the night, so I thought I'd give you a look at the blackish blind snake. Now this, I've shown you so many of these, but I never get sick of finding them. And this is a really big bandy bandy, a big Sydney bandy bandy, which is fun to find. You know, most of you guys probably don't even know that they exist. They only come out at night. But look at how beautiful this big bandy bandy is. This guy is actively out hunting blind snakes. Now these guys only feed exclusively on blind snakes. So very often, if it's a humid night or just after rain, that's when the blind snakes come out from their burrows and that type of thing. And these guys can actively hunt the scent trails of the blind snakes. It's really a fascinating species, but I just love coming across them. Anytime I find one, I just get so excited. The car just stops and I just say, bandy bandy. It just doesn't look like it should be on the road. Oh, what a beautiful snake, but I'm so happy that I came across something worthwhile tonight. But look at that. It's actually a really big guy as well. That thing is massive. I get a couple of photos and then I'll put him straight back on the side of the road. I don't want to harm this snake. I just want him to do his thing. Maybe get a couple of blind snakes for dinner. What do you reckon? 
Now I'm gonna put you back outside before you go missing in my car because that would just be a horrible thing for you to do. I don't want you coming back to Balmain with me, Mr. Bandy Bandy. All right, let's go. Come on. I decided that this clip would be a great opportunity to talk to you guys about Australian snake defensive posture. Now, it is important to understand that every genus of Australian snake is different and have all adapted individual species specific behavioral characteristics that they display when they feel threatened. For example, brown snakes, if cornered, will stand tall in a defensive S-shaped posture with their mouths open to try and ward off an attacker. And black snakes, like this one, are usually relatively quick to retreat. However, they will flatten their necks, hiss, and as a last resort, strike to evade a predator. This behavior is often mistaken as aggression, however, is a snake's last line of defense or last warning before it is forced to strike. As you can see, the black snake in this clip does not see me as a threat and cautiously continues foraging whilst also flattening its neck to appear larger. Alrighty, so I just finished up at that call out out in Dural. <laughs> yeah. And we ended up with my fourth common tree snake of the year. So we've done well, I've calmed down the woman. Um, she was petrified at the start and by the end she was taking photos of me. So it just goes to show a little bit of knowledge goes a long way. Now, I'm not 100% sure why I'm getting so many tree snake call outs at the moment, but I'd say it's got something to do with La Nina. Maybe the added rain is causing the frogs to breed, in turn breeding themselves. So I'm pretty stoked that I got a tree snake, especially when you're going out there to pick up a brown snake. Couldn't ask for anything better than that. And uh, I'm gonna release him in one of the nicest spots that I know of, the common tree snake. Look out for them. Around Australia it varies a little bit, but in Sydney mostly green with the yellow belly. Oh, I love summer. It's just such a beautiful time for me. Oh my God, he almost got me in the face. All right, let's let him go before he gets too fired up. There he is, right at the camera for you. Look at that tongue flicker. Look how alert he is. He's just, he's just hunting for some action. All right, now he's turned at me. That's when you know he means business. So I can show you what I'm looking at when he's facing me. It's quite intimidating for a non-venomous species. As I said last night, I'm bloody over the moon. 